Hi, this is Eddie Hearn, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, and with me via Zoom, I'd like to be joined by Victor Rabi. Victor, good afternoon to you, my man. How's it going? All good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you for asking. How have you been so far within the last couple of weeks? Uh, good. As good as I can, I suppose. Uh, I haven't been doing much, because here in Ireland, we were in lockdown for six weeks. So literally just, we kept training because uh, professional athletes were allowed to stay in the gym. So basically just gym and home. I uh, was, the, the, the uh, was in the gym with Steve. So apart from that, not very exciting. As you mentioned, obviously the lockdown um, in Ireland has been going on for obviously the last six weeks or so. You know, the situation doesn't look like it's clearing up anytime soon. Not just only in the UK, but all over the world. The um, we're literally on the verge of a, perhaps another third national lockdown. I mean, I've asked this question to many fighters, so I just want to ask it to you: Is how do you manage to, you know, stay motivated, stay in shape with everything that's going on? Because fight dates are you know, not getting announced anytime soon and the situation doesn't look to be clearing up anytime soon either. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, uh, I think boxing is kind of, is the only thing that keep, it's keep keeping me going at the moment because I think that if we weren't allowed to train, then I would be losing my mind. But the fact that we're still allowed to go to the gym, that just clears ahead a lot. And I think there's still a lot of shows going on at the moment, you know, like the big shows. So, what I want to do is, is stay kind of fit so that in case something pops up out of nowhere and says, Vic, you have a fight in two, three weeks, that I should be in good shape to take it. But uh, yeah, it's tough. I think it's, it's tough on all of us. But listen, it is what it is. We have to deal with what we have in front of us. So keep training and hopefully something comes up. As I mentioned, the situation is not like, it's not clearing up anytime soon, but you know, it's good to hear that you're keeping yourself in shape and it's good to hear that you're keeping yourself motivated. Um, very unlikely that you'll probably fight again before the end of the year. So I'll take it in 2021 is when we expect to next see you out fighting. Yeah, no, geez. We only have, what, a couple of days left in the year. Uh, so the idea is to go straight back into camp as of January 5th, I think the gaffer said. And then hopefully be out February, March, I know I'm signed with a promoter in the States, uh, Start Boxing, and they're hoping to have us over uh, maybe late March, early April, they said. But again, nothing is um, for sure at the moment. So as of 5th of January, we'll be back in camp and then hoping to get a date for February uh, or April. But we've we've been very lucky with, with uh, Connor Sport, uh, sorry, Slater Sporting's uh, consultancy. Because he's been keeping us busy, getting us fights in uh, uh, Poland and in Spain. So there's always something there if the big guys don't come in uh, until then, you know. So I'll 100% be fighting in February, March, uh, whether it's on a star boxing card or whether it's on a card here in uh, Europe. Uh, I'll be out too. 26 years old. Um, unfortunately, again, this whole coronavirus situation seems to have slowed a lot of things down in boxing. But in yeah. 2021, what is the plans for you and what are the, what are the main aims, what are you looking to achieve in 2021? Well, just continue. We're, we're meant to have this for this year. As in, last year, I, I was meant to be fighting Omar Bordoy uh, around this time in New York. And uh, that fell through because I went over my ankle fight week. And then that fight got rescheduled for April. And then I think it was like three weeks before, four weeks before, he pulled out because he'd done his shoulder. And then I got a replacement. I was meant to be fighting Anthony Loriano for a WBC International in April, on April 17th. And then, the, and then that's when the pandemic hit. And that's what kind of stopped everything. Uh, but uh, So the aim is, I'm hoping for a big fight straight away. Maybe, like I said, maybe March, April. And then straight after, go for another big fight. Uh, I'm hoping for three, three big fights next year uh, in the first nine months. And then we'll see how we are towards the end of the, uh, the year. But the aim is March, April, then June, July, and then another one in September in the States is what the plan.
Well, well, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in these big fights. Yeah. And a few uh, belts around your strap. Um, a few belts around your waist. I just wanted to ask you your thoughts on um, Jake Paul the other day calling out your fellow Irishman, Conor McGregor. Now, obviously, uh, people like a, a bit of controversy in the sport. Um, but a lot of people were very angered by the fact that he was wearing the, the Irish flag at the same time. Some people took yes. massive offence to that. What, what's your thoughts on Jake Paul's, um, you know, in the, the way I he think, all that kind of Yeah, on his end, I think it's a smart move because he's a YouTuber. He's not a fighter. He, isn't it? He's fought once or twice. Do not, I'll give it to him. He looked good. But then, again, when you look at him, he looked good against shit lads. You put him, and he went into the ring at 89 kilos, I think, or something. Yeah. So, cruiser, kind of nearly heavyweight. You put him against any heavyweight or cruiser, any half these lads now, they'll go through him. But again, he's just chasing money. I don't think it's personal or anything. He just wants that Conor McGregor fight because he would get a lot of attention and a lot of money from it. The way he went on about it, I think it's very disrespectful because disrespectful he was wearing the Irish flag and he called him an Irish cunt, which is very, like, you know, that hits, hits home here in Ireland. Uh, and I was only chatting to my mates about it. I think it's funny because the way he's go, he goes on, I think he could get under Conor McGregor's skin. And it's all, it's all a show. You know, it's, he's saying he's showing a big cardboard box, uh, sorry, a cardboard sign saying 50 million. Like. And listen, to be fair, if it, if it was to happen, I probably would watch it because it's very entertaining. And I'd love to see McGregor absolutely smack his ass. But, uh, yeah, it's all business. It's all money, and that's all they're chasing. As you mentioned, obviously, you mentioned, obviously the Irish, well, I'm, well, I'm the Irish flag. You know, a lot of Irish, yeah, a lot of Irish. A lot of offense to that. A few Irish people that I know were very offended by that as well. And as you mentioned, you know, him calling him an Irish cunt as well. You know, yourself found that very offensive. Um, I'm sure you're a fan of Conor McGregor, just like myself. What do you expect Conor McGregor to do now? Do you think he should, you know, look at that and think, well? You're calling me out. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. There'll be, nego there'll be negotiations going on, I think, after his fight with Dustin Poirier on the 23rd. Um, listen, from a point of view, if someone's handing you 50 million to, to whoop their ass, you know, it's still 50 million. No matter what, it's still 50 million. And it's the same thing with Mayweather fighting his brother, Logan. I, I See, that's a bit more weird to me than McGregor because Mayweather has all the money. He has everything. Why does he need to fight your man? God knows why. But um, if someone was to hand, I knew it was 50 minutes, say, let's fight, you know, even a high profile. And because I'd say he's making a lot less for the Dustin Poirier fight. I don't even think that he's in it for the money anymore. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I, can't, I can't see it happening. The only reason cause is because he fought Mayweather. And that was outrageous, like, you know, an MMA star goes in boxing and that happens. Like, he fights the best pound for pound fighter of all time. Uh, so, I could definitely see it happening. And he's getting very personal, which I, I think, I was saying, like I said, I was saying it to my friends. If someone could get it under Connor's skin, it would probably be uh, Jake, because he's taking it. He's crossing the line with a lot of things. And, like, the thing with the Irish just... Um, he's getting very personal and the fact that which I thought was funny uh, the only person that he was following on Instagram was Dee's Evelyn uh, his, his, not his wife I think his fiance so we'll see you know I think Connor has a fight coming up now so he's focusing on that but uh, Jake will try to, to get under his skin more and more and more uh, in the next couple of weeks well he certainly um, kicked up a massive fuss over this whole Situation. The whole world's talking about it. Yeah, and a lot of people were angered by it, especially with the approach that he took. But, well, listen, if business sense, if it makes sense for Conor McGregor, I, I wouldn't mind seeing it either. Um, you know, they're definitely two uh, charismatic people. It, it definitely would sell. Um, Victor, yeah, no. you're part of the, uh, the super lightweight division, and everyone knows that there's a potential future clash, an undisputed clash that everybody's calling out for now between... Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez. That's hopefully one of the big fights we want to see in 2021. Being a super lightweight fighter yourself, um, I know you obviously have studied a lot about Josh Taylor. He's achieved a lot in his career. He's a fighter. Of course, I do. 
better and better. Yeah. What prediction do you give if that fight does happen between him and Ramirez for the undisputed super lightweight clash? Uh, do you know what? It's very hard to call. I think. Uh, I think I do think Taylor will 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 come out stronger in the, in the later rounds, and I think he could potentially get a stoppage because he's a hard puncher and he's he's he doesn't stop you. He'll be on your face, and he's very clever. And his ring IQ, I think, is phenomenal. Sure, he wouldn't have won the the Ali Trophy if it wasn't for that. You know, he's shown his his uh, his talents, and he showed his how smart he is in the ring. I definitely back him. Going into that fight, but saying that it's Ramirez is very dangerous as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's like for me, it's like Canelo Smith that's going to happen uh, this well tomorrow morning. Uh, both top world class fighters. If Smith decides to stick it to to put it on Canelo, uh, I think Canelo might get the best out of it. But if Smith decides to stick to boxing, uh, I, I genuinely think that he can pull it off and and, and beat him. So I don't know. The big, I, do you know what I want to see in twenty one from the light welterweights would be uh, Jack Hatchell mm-hmm. at a world yeah. level. Very good. Fight. I think that's I've I've watched him live against Tyrone McKenna in Belfast, and I was so impressed. I've seen him obviously on TV, but he's a very very impressive fighter. Just the way he goes on, I'd love to see him against the top names. Well, we've uh, had, we've had your going. I mean, you're on a good run so far. Tyrone McKenna's, you know, also. You know, well known as well around your sides. I mean, what about that? Yeah. You know, um, Dublin's own against you know Belfast's own. You got Belfast Ireland versus Northern Ireland fight yourself versus Tyrone McKenna. Is that something you'd be hoping for next year? Uh, do you know what? Well, the aim is to go down to lightweight anyway. So I'm not. I'm not going to be sticking around at light welter. The next fight I think will be at 62. Uh, so 137, I think, or something, uh, and then hopefully make championship weight for for some sort of belt at lightweight. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the states, so my my plan is to go down. I've made uh, light welter easy, like fairly easy, and I think I could go down a lot more. So we'll take it at lightweight next. Uh, Tyron McKenna, Jesus, if it makes sense, absolutely, I get it with anyone. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, well, Victor, is there anything else you'd like to add as we bring the interview to an end? Uh, no, I just hope that everyone's uh, staying at home safe. Uh, Exercising mostly, you know, I, I find that running and being in the gym just releases so much stress and just makes me happy. So stay safe, stay at home, enjoy your Christmas and hit the gyms hard in January. Likewise, same to yourself, Victor. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we hope you have a good Christmas and a happy new year. And we you look too, my man. up with you at the beginning of 2021. Perfect. We'll keep in touch. Will do. Victor Rabbi, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.